gold, myrrh, frankincense and asbestos. It seems Christmas has come early for the Prime Minister as Vivian Westwood attempted to deliver an unconventional present to number 10. The fashion designer was accompanied by her son and a father Christmas wearing a gas mask in her protest against fracking. When arguing that the controversial technique of extracting oil and gas has links to serious health complications, they compared the potential risks to those associated with asbestos exposure. While the alternative energy industry is in its infancy in the UK, companies are currently exploring and drilling in areas with potential, gathering data as well as attitudes in Britain. The police didn't allow the chemical present to be given to David Cameron, so Dame Westwood instead delivered independent medical reports on the consequences of fracking. Well, joining me now is her son, Joseph Corey. He's a social activist and founder of Talk Fracking. It's an organisation that aims to bring the issues, benefits and risks of fracking into public debate. Joseph, there is no evidence actually linking fracking to the dangers of asbestos, and that's been made very clear by the government's chief scientific advisor. So, so why make that comparison? Well, I find it quite odd for the government to be saying that now, or the um, chief advisor, Walport, to be saying that now. I mean, why include it in the report? It's quite an inflammatory comment. Um, but in some I believe it's it being misrepresented over this. Well, I can't. See, I've, I've read the report about three times, and I can't see you know, what, why it's misrepresented. Um, it was a comment made by Professor Sterling, was added into his report, presumably under Walport's um, authority and uh, permission. Um, and what it says quite clearly is that, you know, despite the fact that um, some new technologies may seem like a, a good solution at the time, that fracking could well be um, uh, a, a similar situation to the situations we've seen with asbestos and thalidomide. How can it damage our health? All this fracking goes on underground then, so, so how can it risk us? Well, I mean, essentially it's the chemicals that are used in the process and the chemicals and heavy metals, um, radioactive materials that you're churning up in the ground at very deep levels that have been trapped there for millions of years and then bringing them back up to the surface. And those contaminants are able to um, be airborne, transmitted um, in, an, in an airborne manner, um, but also through water and um, pollution of agricultural land and make their way into the human body. I mean, we're looking, as, as, sorry, as you said before, I mean, we delivered um, that box of asbestos this morning, particularly to draw attention to what the chief uh, scientific advisor to the government had put in his report. Um, but we also delivered, and of course it wasn't real asbestos in the box, I mean, we would never consider putting David Cameron and his family at risk from something like that. Um, however, the dangers of fracking are very real. Um, it's been and going on in the US for a very long time, hasn't it, already? Well, so are we hearing evidence of people being affected by it? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's probably been going on in America really for about the last 10 to 15 years. And I think you've had more... Uh, independent research and papers and documents come out in the first six months of this year than you've had in the previous ten years. And that's because it takes time for these things to develop um, and it takes time for some of the consequences to be seen and actually to be recognised and then for people to study them and to report on them. And we delivered two independent medical um, reports from quite serious medical organisations to um, Cameron this morning which clearly link uh, the chemicals used in the fracking process to birth defects in children, horrible respiratory diseases, particularly from airborne contamination. We're seeing in uh, US clusters of rare forms of brain cancer, um, lots of stomach illnesses due to contaminated water being ingested, uh, skin rashes, uh, nosebleeds. So, so all this evidence you've now given to the Prime Minister. Can yeah. I quickly ask you, Vivian Westwood, your mother and you, why are you so passionate about fracking? You know, about a year ago I didn't know anything about fracking. And I went to the camp at Balkan. I was invited to go down there and I um, thought I would look into fracking and look at some of the evidence. And the more I looked into it, the more shocked I became. Um, you know, this is really a serious issue and I think, you know, nobody, you don't need to listen to me about it and you don't need to listen to anybody else. People are fully able to go on and look at the details for themselves and I think when you look at that, the amount of evidence that is now starting to come through is pretty shocking and people will be shocked. 
And as and when more and more people start waking up to the reality that this government, without any democratic mandate, is actually planning to roll this out over 65% of the country, people are going to wake up to this happening on their doorsteps. Because at the moment, I think there's an impression that this is going to happen in some sort of far-flung corner of the UK. Well, it's not. I mean, they are applying for licences here in London, in Park Royal, in South Ryslip, in Croydon. I mean, you know, that is, they, this is serious stuff. And I think if people um, start looking at some of the health issues surrounding this, uh, this technology and start to look at some of the horror stories that have come out of the US, um, I think they'll be genuinely concerned. Joseph Corey, thanks very much indeed for joining us here on RTUK. Thank you.